talk about some of the issues that this creates right now. You mentioned um, Dapper Labs, which is in some ways a separate situation, but yeah. um, let, let's start with the Bitcoin NFTs. Um, you know, what is the, I don't want to say the, you're not a soothsayer here, but but give me some sense about the level of excitement, the level of controversy yeah. around this. Well, so the the, the excitement is massive, um, as is the terror and fear. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which side are you on? Um, I'm I'm firmly neutral on this. Okay. One. <laughs> I think it's a fascinating story either way. Um, one of the things that I think is so fascinating about it is it wasn't just a more successful PR campaign mm -hmm. that led to the explosive For interest of, in ordinals, uh, ordinals NFTs. Right. Um, it was a technological breakthrough. So the Ordinals team was really fed up with this idea that an NFT was two separate things. One of them was a couple lines of code on the, the public blockchain that mm -hmm. marks the ownership, um, but also that points to an off-chain repository for images, sound bites, etc. And so like the thing that you actually own with these older version of NFTs, i.e. the NFTs on, on Ethereum, most NFTs mm -hmm. on Ethereum and elsewhere, is, is just a line of code. and it, So you can change the NFT. Yes, because offline. the image itself, because the soundbite itself, because the property deed, et cetera, whatever it is that you are pointing to is elsewhere, that thing can be changed. It could even be removed. It could go out of existence altogether. And you would have a really expensive line of code that pointed to nothing. Right. And what the Ordinals team did, and they are actually uh, part of a recent movement of people that are solving the same problem, is figured out a way to store that data directly on the blockchain. So it cannot be altered. Correct. Okay. Correct. And and what the Ordinals team did, they're, they're calling it an artifact. Uh, it's an immovable record of mm -hmm. uh, uh, an image, et cetera, that is stored on the publicly available auditable Bitcoin blockchain and nowhere else. Um, the name Ordinals, incidentally, comes from the way that they solve this problem, but we won't get into that right now. Uh, incidentally, we though... We could. <laughs> I couldn't. Oh, <laughs> That's okay. the hard part. Okay. <laughs> um, there's, they're, they're not the only people to solve this problem. Hmm. Um, in fact, uh, a, 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 a little company called Proof XYZ, um, uh, which incidentally is run by uh, Kevin Rose, the creator of mm -hmm. Dig, and, and backed by Alexis Ohanian, the co-founder of Reddit, mm -hmm. has actually also solved this problem. Instead of calling it artifacts, uh, the Proof team calls it in-chain NFTs. The but it's tantamount to the same thing. Yes, it is. And these on-chain transactions um, is kind of what they're making fun of a little bit here. The idea that the ownership is of something that isn't actually in the blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, the proof team is doing in-chain NFTs, which similarly means that these, these NFTs are actually created from the blockchain itself in the blockchain. And that technological breakthrough... I think has the possibility to open up the application of NFTs to a wide variety of other areas. Are we already seeing proof that that NFTs created this way have higher value because of that fact that they are essentially embedded? You know, I think that we might be too early to see the value of Bitcoin NFTs reflecting an interest in the new technology. Mm. What I think we're seeing is the value of these Bitcoin NFTs reflecting the fact that they are the first of a new um uh, kind of NFT leveraging Bitcoin. So the the interest is more from a historical perspective than it is from a technological perspective. Well, let's talk about some of the issues being faced right now. Um, talk about Dapper Labs and what, you know, this whole debate around securities. For yeah, example. so it's interesting. I think some of the people that are terrified of uh, NFTs being minted on the Bitcoin blockchain um, are, are, are bringing up concerns over security issues. Uh, in fact, Bitcoin stands to this day the most stable, certain regulatory positioned digital asset. And it is pretty clearly a commodity, at least within mm -hmm. the United States. Uh, while some have called Ethereum a commodity, including uh, one regulator at the SEC, who somewhat informally on stage said that Ethereum uh, was a commodity. 
Um, no, no one else really has that status. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one of the reasons for that is that Bitcoin existed before people were paying attention. Bitcoin distributed before it was considered an investment opportunity. Most of the early people that bought Bitcoin got it because they were cypherpunks, they were uh, uh, ideologues. They were buying for pennies on the dollar. If you're they were Tim technologically Draper, yeah. curious, buying pizza, um, experimenting with mm -hmm. this stuff. Which is to say that Bitcoin distributed um, organically. And a lot of people think that that means that it's the only truly decentralized cryptocurrency. Um, even Ethereum, which was relatively early to the game and was technically open to anybody that knew the, the pre-mine existed, mm -hmm. um, really was only distributed in those early days to people in the know. Mm -hmm. People that got that email saying, hey, we're doing this thing, you want to buy some. And so this, this um, regulatory uncertainty about whether or not um, Ethereum might be a security, whether or not other assets might be a security, has contributed heavily to the perception that NFTs might be securities. Which is less desirable than being a commodity? Very much so for people that want to see them traded widely, because in the United States especially, you have to have regulatory permission to trade securities. And NFTs, regardless of the underlying blockchain, can be designed in a way that starts to make them look much more like securities than otherwise. So for example, let's say that you and your friends want to buy an NFT that's worth a million dollars, but you're not millionaires. So mm -hmm. you all get together and you all put a little bit of money to buy this NFT that you all can mm -hmm. share. You, you communally own the rights to that NFT. Now that starts to look an awful lot like a security and that has nothing to do with the underlying technology. That has to do with the, the behavior of the people on top of it. And, and, and the recourse you have if things go wrong, which is the genesis of this class action suit. Yeah, right? so Dapper Labs uh, raised tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars at a multiple billion dollar valuation. Um, got some giant uh, partners, including the National Basketball Association, uh, which has basically given the rights to create what amounts to basketball trading cards mm -hmm. using the Dapper Labs blockchain, which is called Flow. And uh, the fact that Dapper Labs owns this blockchain, well, hold me, the fact that Dapper Labs created this blockchain, mm -hmm. um, the ownership of the different nodes is of debate. We'll just put it that way. What's the cryptocurrency underlying it? Uh, that's a good question. Um, there, there's there's really barely much of a cryptocurrency to talk about at oh, all. Oh, okay. 